They said they got like 50 police looking for. My thing is everybody should be looking for. Family members of 27-year-old Danielle Hoyle are looking for answers after she was killed and her baby was reported missing. Twenty-seven-year-old Danielle Hoyle, a mother of two, recently gave birth to a beautiful two-day-old baby girl named Kennedy. She was overjoyed with the arrival of her daughter. Danielle is described as a sweet person that was loved by many, as well as a hard-working mother that would do anything to take care of her family. On the evening of February 1st, around 6 p.m., Danielle left her home in Whitehaven with Kennedy. According to her mother, Danielle planned on taking her newborn baby to the hospital for additional testing. She says she spoke to her daughter around 7.30 p.m. and asked if she made it to her destination. Danielle informed her that she made it to the hospital and was attempting to get the infant out of the vehicle and into the hospital. Her mother followed up with several calls and messages, but was unable to reach Danielle for the remainder of the evening. Her mother sent something was off and eventually notified the Memphis police of her concerns. Around 11.30 p.m., officers arrived at the home and inquired about the description of Danielle's vehicle as well as her possible whereabouts. Police were informed that Danielle and Kennedy were last seen around Sedgwick Drive and Levi Road in Whitehaven. During the search, police would discover a lifeless body located next to an abandoned vehicle in the same exact area. Memphis police say they found a body in an abandoned vehicle confirmed as being Hoyle's in the area of Sedgwick Street and Levi Road. Police confirm Hoyle was found shot and killed. Danielle's two-day-old daughter, Kennedy, was nowhere to be found. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation immediately issued an Amber Alert. Memphis police were called to a Walmart in Whitehaven after an abandoned car seat was located near a dumpster. Family members confirmed that the car seat belonged to Kennedy Hoyle. Initially, police had no suspects in the case. They would soon announce the detainment of a man known to family members. It would later be revealed that Brandon Isabel, the father of the missing newborn, had been charged with two counts of first-degree murder, murder in the perpetration of aggravated kidnapping and tampering, fabricating evidence in connection with the deaths of Danielle and Kennedy Hoyle. According to court records, dating back to 2019, he was cited for passenger safety responsibility and found guilty. According to an arrest affidavit, Brandon Isabel admitted to luring Danielle Hoyle to the area of Levi and Sedgwick and shooting her, ironically, on the same day as his 25th birthday. He then confessed to taking Kennedy Hoyle out of Danielle's car, driving to Island Park and Upper Mud Island boat ramp, and tossing her into the water. He then threw the gun he used to shoot Danielle into the Mississippi River in Wolf River Delta. Danielle had just communicated to a family member that Brandon was holding the baby in the hospital and they were both sleeping. According to speculations, Brandon allegedly asked Danielle to abort the baby because he was married and did not want his wife finding out. It is also alleged that he has a girlfriend who was caught on video in the vehicle with him when they put the car seat out next to the dumpster. It was also discovered that he went to the hospital to visit his five-year-old son who was admitted for surgery in order to create an alibi. Brandon's wife will later confirm that although they remained in contact for the sake of their five-year-old son, there was no romantic connection between the two. She expressed her feelings towards the incident on Facebook. Okay, so I've been trying to keep from posting because y'all sources are not correct, but I do not have anything to do with what's going on with my son's father. I'm not his girlfriend. We have been separated for years. Y'all have me mixed up with his actual girlfriend. I have been at home caring for my son. He had surgery yesterday. I only deal with him solely about our son and nothing more. But thanks to everyone who has reached out and checked on me and my son. And I'm sending my thoughts and prayers to Danielle and her family. She then posts, this disgusts me on so many levels. Why, Brandon? You threw your whole life away. Nothing is worth taking someone's life especially a newborn. What could possibly be the reason? How do I tell my five-year-old son who loves his dad that his dad is a murderer? This is wrong on so many levels. Brandon, Danielle, as well as the girlfriend all worked together at FedEx, where Brandon was known to deal with multiple women. Brandon's alleged girlfriend 
has not made any Facebook posts or made any remarks regarding the incident. On Brandon's Facebook page, which has since been deleted, he spoke often about how happy he was to be a father to his son and even stated in a Father's Day post the following, Happy Father's Day to me and all the other good fathers out there. MPD began searching along the Mississippi River on the 800 block of Island Drive on Mud Island. They say the newborn has not been located. However, evidence suggests that she is deceased. Police are continuing the search to recover her remains. If I'm saying I want to help, I should be able to help. This is my baby. This is my grandbaby. I only have my baby 10 minutes, and I haven't seen them since. Why would somebody want to hurt a baby? She precious. Danielle's mother expressed that Danielle and her 10-year-old daughter were best friends and that she was excited about becoming a big sister. All her daughter knows is Danielle. All she does is cry for her mother. This tragedy has taken a toll on the entire family. And now, instead of looking forward to helping Danielle care for the new baby, her mother must plan for both of their funerals. Holding back tears, she stated that she has to identify the remains of her two-year-old granddaughter when they are recovered, and that until she's able to do so, she's unable to come to grips with the reality of her untimely death. 